So, I know it's a good thing to do the uncomfortable thing. And uh, I have to be honest, this is my most uncomfortable thing ever because it's in English. And because of the fact, uh, normally I read all the books of the guest or listen to all the podcasts or, well, do a great research. But in this case, well, I know, well, almost nothing about you. Uh, <coughs> but a mutual friend of ours, he said to me, you have to interview this guy and I trust him and, and the feeling is good. So it's like I said, uncomfortable, but I, well, how do you feel? Uh, Ragnar Johnson is his name. How do you feel? But same as you. Uh, let's, let's see what this can bring. <laughs> uh, mutual friend. Yes. Uh, he made this connection. Uh, I'm here. We're supposed to meet. Uh, and let's find out what can come out of that. Um, well, let's first talk about the beginning of your life. What's what's your story, Ragnar? Because every human being has a story where he's born, how, uh, how he was raised. Yeah, there is many stories in a story, but yeah, I'm born in Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up there, uh, ordinary family situation, uh, nothing special. Um, and uh, but that was kind of a quick journey of, of all illusions about what we believe is happiness, like career, family, money. Uh, I was brought to an end of that pretty quickly. So arriving, approaching 25, I started to have this longing about um, happiness. What is happiness? Mm -hmm. uh, and I would kind of realized that happiness is, uh, we have many illusions about what happiness is. Um, and it brought me to the point of deciding that I wanted to go traveling, uh, keep, quit my job, whatever, take one year, go around the world, and to, with this aspect of experiencing uh, in other cultures and for other people, what, what, what does this happiness really contain? What does that mean? Um, plan was to go for one year, uh, and I kind of never went back to Norway. This is like 32 years ago. And um, to make it short, I jump, I found happiness. Yeah. I found an inner happiness, which is like a, a, a volcano, which is like, wow, it, it's, yeah. So and let's first of talk about <laughs> what, you, what you mentioned, the illusions of happiness. And I, I think I know what you mean, but it's more like short-term satisfaction, I guess. But it's about uh, if we have money, things will be good. Uh, if we have relationships, things will be good. Uh, it's, it's all about outer, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and realization is that true happiness comes from within, and then it's yours, mm -hmm. and nobody can't take it away. And then there is the other happiness, which is all based upon other outer stuff, which is temporarily, I'm not saying it doesn't bring happiness, but it's not a permanent state. Mm. And, and what was the first moment in your life you... you really felt like, oh, it's about that, well, maybe I can call it inner peace or something like that? Or how do you... I would you say it's more uh, more uh, uh, unsatisfaction or, 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 a, or a feeling that there should be more to it than what I could find. Like I had a job, I went quickly through from like scratch to end. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I could look and, and I could not really go any further. I couldn't see, I could go further, but I couldn't see that that would change anything like more content with being me in some way. Uh, uh, I got married, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with getting married. This was just not the right timing for me. And maybe my, if looking back, I've had visions and insights, but not a surrounding around me who could support them or give, make sense out of it. So when I was small or growing up, if I had a vision or an experience, that would be something like a strong impact, but it would fade away as a memory or maybe even like if it was a daydream. Um, but so it was more of arriving at this point of that there was money. I had a house, I had a car, I had a motorbike. What more do you want to buy for money? And then still more money would come. And then it's like you start to ask questions. I did. Yeah. I started asking questions. And uh, three days before I got married, I had like a strong insights who were showing me why this was not right for me, for example. But I spoke with my uh, wife-to-be 
And we got married anyway because there was a resonance. There was an understanding that actually there is a big boss here, which is life. And that we might promise or not promise or have intention or not intention. It makes no difference. If life calls, life calls and we have no choice but to follow. Um, so it was kind of more a growing feeling of that all this which we thought like which we are programmed to believe that that's the way to go because if you can't if you fulfill all of that mm -hmm. but then you will be good you know they're yeah. great but for me it wasn't true no and there was this deep question of that like but th if this is happiness then life is empty and where do i go from here i was 25 years you know 24 25 i'm looking towards future and i had all these things which was supposed to be happiness mm -hmm. But it was empty. Yeah. And then it's like, again, it's just a stepping stone. There was this feeling who made me decide. I propose. Unsatisfaction is a great drive. Yeah. And then I, I propose in this time, I propose for my wife that, yeah. look, why don't we take one year off and we just go? Okay. And she told me that you are just an unrealistic daydreamer <laughs> and this is not possible to do in reality. So I knew that, okay, our paths were kind of separating there. And, uh, uh, January 1990, I left Norway with a promise to myself that the 90s were going to be my years. Yeah. And and um, in the beginning, I just had fun. I traveled, uh, I met people, I had a great time. But uh, looking back, I can also see that that was a gentle way of learning to navigate in life by how I felt, yeah. not by what I thought. Because I set myself free, like from, from, it's a beautiful thing to just leave and to be alone and you have nobody ever there who is like putting you into a cage or you are like this or and you are allowed to change in that you can change you can really find yourself because there is nobody trying to put you back in a box of but what happening to you yeah and then me i really found myself uh, or life found me after this um, about what is my path now the path of the heart yeah um this is not a conscious choice. This is something you found me, opened me up, uh, started sharing with me. Uh, and, and, and what is there is so beautiful that there is no other choice but to like let this be shared. That's why it's come to me, is for me to share this. And it's about love. It's about opening the heart and, and all what that contains. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know if there was like a specific moment or several moments you 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 met a lot of people when you started that trip. Um, what were the first um, well feelings that you well that, that 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 you found that happiness inside you? What what gave you inspiration for that? Again, navigating according to what we feel to do. Yeah, but that's <coughs> that's that you can say that, but that's uh, for me is like the most difficult thing to really listen to your body, listen to yeah. what a feeling is. But I didn't say it was easy. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I, I want to learn how yeah. you, how you, how you, uh, yeah, how, how you did that. But it's two ways. It's like you're asking to learn how to do that. So then there is some simple tools who can be shared, who are efficient to work. It's like one minute a day, there, there is an uh, exercise one can do, for example. I'll speak about that straight away. Okay. So, um, one exercise one can do for me it's about being heart centered it's about getting out of the mind and into uh, our center into our heart and yeah. to to live our life from our heart uh putting it upside down i think most people are mind based yeah, they, and they, they navigate the mind and <clears throat> you have to listen to your heart exactly because here is all the programs our own others whatever uh, and they are directing our life. We also have emotional wounds. It's a, it's a, it's a complex story. And they are all uh, in the theater of the mind. I call mm -hmm. it a theater of the mind. And, and, and what goes on there is not necessarily what is for us. While our soul knows what is for us, speaks to us through heart, arrives in mind as intuition, and we need to learn to listen to that intuition, like to identify it and to listen mm -hmm. instead of listening to all these programs. Yeah. So then there is two really simple things. Like, for example, one is that if intuition is trying to tell you something, let's say that comes with a positive feeling, you are drawn towards something. The next thing that happens in the mind is a negative thought. And we, and then they start. Always. Yeah. And then they start to discuss a little bit. Yeah. 
And then we tend to listen to the negative thought. Now, me, this negative thought, it represents all programs which we carry, and I call that the saboteur. And the aim is to identify the saboteur and stop listening to the saboteur. Yeah, but stop listening. It's, there is a reason for that saboteur. And of course, I, I understand what you mean. Don't listen to it too often or always. But uh, yeah, sometimes people are sitting here and they're like, get away with the ego or get away with the saboteur. And I think, yeah, yeah but, but there is a reason of that well, yeah, you know, sure. Uh, and that is not my story. We are not to get rid of anything. No. We are to embrace all there is. Exactly. So you have to embrace that. Heart. Sa so, but that's <clears throat> what I mean. So you have to embrace that saboteur as sure. well. It's not about kicking it out. No. It's about identifying it and then making a choice. Do I listen or don't I? Mm -hmm. But it will be there. Yeah. I call it the theater of the mind. And I realized that this theater of the mind goes on all the time. And when we are saying that we want to uh, reach into stillness or, or, or whatever, I think what we are doing is that we are just bringing our attention away from the mind. And since we are not with that, we have the illusion that this has stopped. Yeah. But it, uh, me, I think it turns all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then why live heart centered then? Yeah, because if you bring your attention away from the theater and you're actually centered in your heart, it doesn't mean this doesn't go on. No. But you're just not listening to it. But um, do you do you how how do you train your intuition? Because that's a really small voice, not not mm -hmm. not that loud mm -hmm. as well a lot of other voices in your head. No. So you talked about the minute exercise. I'm really curious for that. But is, is there a way to train your intuition to listen to it more and to feel more comfortable comfortable to to by 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 mapping it i would say but there is one thing about intuition which is not with the programs is that your intuition is also linked to your gut feeling mm -hmm. so if we have to use more than just the mind to figure this one out absolutely so if you are feeling again i'm saying heart centered which soul heart is in, in resonance with this gut feeling yeah. is soul and heart for you the same no soul speaks through heart soul is we have body mind and spirit spirit soul if you want yeah there are three aspects three scale yeah. uh, however imagery we want to put on that and they need to harmonize each other but how do they best harmonize them well, i mean according to each other i would say that if i stay centered in this three scale mm -hmm. and i honor all three of them equally then this is in harmony yeah so it's not about getting rid of ego it's not about erasing programs for example our mind if if this was a computer if we say then we would have an erase button and we could erase unhealthy programs but we don't have that so that is not an option no so then it's about accepting all what i am and all what goes on inside me without being in conflict with it but i can ask questions about who do i want to rule yeah. my decision making yeah. How do I want to navigate on my way? And, and it's a practice. How do we get out of this? I'm going to think my way to the best solution, to the right answer. How we get out of this one? And I'm saying the solution is you go in your feeling and you try to feel your way to the right decision. Yeah. And then when you find res resonance in your gut, but you're tapping your soul contract and this is the direction you should take and you still have the free choice whether you will or yeah. not. And if you don't, be your best friend, pat yourself on the yeah. back, and you say it's no big deal, and you keep trying. But this is the thing, this is all what's kukuru about. Kukuru is a word I, I uh, invented myself, and it's that name you've, uh, of all the things inside, so your gut feeling, your heart, your soul, your, 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 the, who you really are, your, your yeah, inner your essence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But well, like I said, uh, the brain is strong, and it's a great tool, I think, and I agree. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But there's always this fear thing. Why? And, uh, and so that's the, again, I ask the same question. How do you listen more to the, to the intuition than, well, to, to the voice of fear? Again, by making a choice. Yeah. It's like, I am in charge of this boat. However you want it or not, I'm the captain of this ship. While, 
often we are uh, robotic mm -hmm. uh, programs. They are kicked in motion by an input and we have a reaction. And where are we in that story? So me, I think what I have to do then first is observe myself. Yeah. How does it work? Yeah. How does it how does it move things in my head who ends up being a reaction? And then the idea is by observation and patience, one day I can get in between. And I can see the program kicking in, whether it's a negative thought yeah. who wants to hold me back or whatever. And I can go in the middle of that and I can look at this thought and I can embrace that with all the love I have and smile. And I see you, I recognize you, but I'm not just going to go there. No. So that's really mastering your mind. It's observing your mind. I don't think yeah. we ever can master our mind. We, but well, you we said you're like, I'm the captain. I think like, yeah, I want to be the captain. I want to be the boss. I want to have it uh, in control. Yeah, but it's always new layers. Yeah, yeah, okay. And we will always grow. If we stay in this flow, we never figure it out. No. We never have the answers because there is always a new chapter, a new layer, a new, a new, a new. And then going back to this one minute a day yeah. then, so that's an exercise. Yeah. So, so, um, so this is a meditation who kind of came to me, which in the beginning I was doing with a group in France for like one hour each time. And it's about bringing your attention to your heart, like centering yourself in your heart. And in your heart, we all have a door. And when we open this door, we feel love. Now the key for this door can be anything. It can be your dog, your cat, your horse, your partner, Mother Earth, me, I don't care. Because it's not about the key. It's about feeling love. And then for, for, we were doing that for one hour. And then this got condensed into a one minute a day practice. So what you're doing in this one minute is you are centering yourself in your heart. You're using your key and you're just feeling love. That's all you're doing. Then that doesn't seem like much. No. And then we can go into what I, what is going on then. So me, I would say love is healing. Love is, for me, there's two master healers, nature and love. And what makes them different is that they heal us and we don't even know, we didn't, don't even need to know what to heal. That's the great thing. We can leave the mind out of it, okay? So in this one minute, first of all, you will feel good because if love feels good. For one voilà. minute, yeah. Voilà. <laughs> and then if, if love is healing, then for one minute, you're actually healing yourself. Yeah. And then there is a bigger picture. This love is not contained just within me. It's an energy. So that means that in the, for this one minute, when we would feed this energy field with whatever we would, now we're feeding it with love. Now this love goes to the end of the universe. It touches everything just because it's energy, simply. And then, I don't know where to go on that one. There is a big picture. We're all in conflict with this world, or not all in conflict with this world, but many are in conflict with what is going on in this world. Yeah. And they would like to see a change. Now, when we're coming back to what we spoke before, how can I then be more clever at listening to my intuition? To my, we realize that actually, if I bring it home and I want to change myself, that's difficult. That's really difficult. And if it's so difficult for me to change myself, how can I have the illusion that I can change someone else? For me, that's just not possible. So then I can see there is a lot of people putting their energies out there to bring on a change, but I can question also how efficient that would be. Well, maybe it's better to come home and change oneself, okay? So this one minute a day. Let's say that human reality is just a consequence of each and one of us putting our energy into this grid. Now, if we wanted to change human reality, we change the input, we change the outcome. And what do you mean by human reality? Whatever we are living, yeah, whatever yeah, okay. is surrounding us, whatever any one of us are dealing with. Yeah. If we would like to see a change in that, if we come home, we change ourselves. We feed this grid. Yeah. Love, compassion, oneness, all this which is missing mm -hmm. for bringing on a positive growth, let's say. If we did that, W the world would change. Yeah. If enough people did that, the world would just change as a consequence. Not because we are out there trying to change the world, no. but we are bringing it home and we are changing ourselves. So connection with yourself and connect better with... With everything. all there is. Everything else, yeah. And then, so then this one minute a day, you, you bring your attention there and you won't be able to stay there. So you're going to go back in your mind. So then we're back to old meditation techniques. Yeah. You just gently bring your attention back to your heart and you open, feel love, and you try to stay with it. 
And then for the ones who practice, one minute can become five minutes, can become, but that does, I, I'm not concerned with that. This one minute is enough. If one has patience and one does this every day, this one minute, whether you're on the toilet or me, I don't care where you find your one minute. But if anyone wants to change anything for themselves or attract something or heal something, or I don't really care, if they can't invest one minute, they are not serious. No. And I promise that this tool has been shared like for, for some years now. And so I have the pleasure of having feedback. And, and, and this works. Now, so what about our mind? And so we spoke about, okay. So our mind is scattered all over the place. Yeah. Attached to all kinds of things. Now, what happens to my mind when I center myself in a heart for one minute? I bring back all my scattered pieces too. And if I do this every day, sure, when I let go of my in intention to stay here or the attention to be with it, my mind again is scattered itself and attached. But not a problem. If you do this every day, you can't go too far. No. Well, if you leave this one one month after, your mind is just all over the place. And so for me, it's, it's, it's many small, but you have to do it. That's mm. the whole thing. And if we don't do it, it won't happen. No. And then... With that one minute exercise, you will train your inner voice, your, your, your. Let's say it's an exercise. That's easier to just speak about it as a yeah, general I love exercise. It. I love it because I, 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 that's, that's the whole thing. I know you can train everything exactly. by doing it exactly. and, and trying it. And, and that's where I, where I want to go with that. Because yeah. anything which you practice every day, you're going to get good at. Yeah. Okay. So this one minute is not going to be a problem. No. And you can and you can go to stay there longer than that too, but uh, you, the exercise is that you're actually centering yourself in the heart, mm -hmm. and you're letting go. But each time you're doing this, you're going to get better and better at staying in your heart. One day you're going to center yourself in your heart, and you're just going to realize that you are not leaving anymore. No. And being. But is that like an enlightenment state of mind, or? or uh... I have no idea. No. What is an enlightened state of mind? But it sounds a, a bit boring for me because, of course, it's great to feel love, but it's always fun to have bad feelings and to feel ugly or to feel uh, like, 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 well, for example, if you have a, a really bad feeling uh, because somebody died, that's a great feeling. Yeah. It's, it's bad. It's, it's like... But it's it's like feeling, you know. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not saying that it is a a, a pink fluffy cloud no, which exactly, are floating. Exactly, no, exactly. No, because you are living life. Yeah. And life is bringing experience, and they are bringing as we tag them, good or bad. Now let's get away from the good and bad. Everything is just experience. Brings, exactly. And then it's to embrace every experience for whatever it is, because it comes to us, so we yeah. can learn something from it and have that experience yeah uh yeah death beautiful yeah. painful but beautiful yeah. wow how much beauty there can be in the moment of death so when you when you uh, talked about uh, true happiness true happiness is also feeling really bad sure yeah sure no but that's a good true thing. happiness is finding yourself i think and then being able to be there for yourself all time mm -hmm. so that means in the hard times you are there for yourself in the in the good times you are there for yourself i will even go as far as saying i hope there is more bad times because you learn more that's where you learn <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's a roller coaster and we go down here so we can learn stuff so we can evolve and then we come higher out so we can celebrate what we learned when we were in the dump yeah. But then let's find another tunnel we can go through so we can grow again. Yeah. And do you practice it yourself every day and maybe more than a minute that, that, that listen to your heart or is it like now a constant connection? Yeah, I think I'm more or less living my life from my heart. That's where I make decisions. That's I am allowing myself to like be drawn towards and if it feels resonance i will i will do and if it doesn't feel resonance i will not does not matter what it's wrapped up in or what story goes with it or i try to cut through the illusion and to feel essence yeah but that's that's a good thing you say like you feel the resonance because that's the whole thing um for me that's it sometimes it's it's really hard to 
really know if this is well the heart of the mind may uh, so so when you feel resonance uh, well th that's how i started this conversation it feels really uncomfortable and i know it's good uh but well a few years ago it was like uncomfortable all right get the fuck out because this doesn't feel good so do you do you know what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah. It's, it's really hard to because maybe your mind is saying no don't don't do this it doesn't feel good but maybe that's more like uh, an ego thing a mind thing that's uh well uh, telling you don't do this because uh, it's it's not uh, not but, but what about if the mind was not in it? Yeah. And if the mind actually becomes a tool? Yeah. Because the mind has certain qualities. And then it has also, like I say... The but sometimes I think the mind is so incredible good yeah. that it can tell yourself that you are listening to your heart, but actually it is your mind speaking. Yeah, that's why if you should not stay too much up in no. that. <laughs> that's Just what I mean. If If... It's like a radio and we simplify it. So on this radio, I have two stations, right? Yeah. And the one is the mind and that's where the dial is fixed for every one of us. Yeah. Okay. And then somebody tells me that, you know, that there is another station on your radio. And I go, ah, oh, yeah, what is that? But it's actually your heart. And then me, I try to turn this dial and I will find my heart. Yeah. And then when I find this radio station, I realize that I actually like this radio station much better than the other one. But the radio is rigged. So That's each time I turn the dial to heart and I let go, it goes back to mind. Okay, but I've realized now that there is actually two stations on my radio and I don't want to give up. No. So I turn it back to heart, it goes back to mind, I turn it back to heart. One day this mechanism who turns it back gets worn out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so then finally I arrive at, in the beginning maybe it takes like, Two seconds and it's back. <laughs> and then it takes five minutes and it's back. And then one day this mechanism just isn't working anymore. And then we can say, okay, so then what does the mind become then? Because it gets a different role. So that means that's the other radio station, which when I was in my mind, I used to visit my heart mm -hmm. so I could find peace and I could, have, well, I, but now I will do different. I am in that center, in that peace. I'm in the flow of life and I'm reading the signs which are coming and I'm navigating according to what feels right. I don't think we can do it much better. And then when I need the mind, I turn the dial and I go to the mind and then I don't visit the theater of the mind, neither the saboteur, I go to the good qualities of mind, which mind definitely just, has. Just the computer. Voila. And then I use that for the mind, use the mind for that. And then I go back to my heart. And, and I think that we can all do that, but it's not easy. That's no. one thing. And it meets a mind who asks a lot of questions about that because what now? The mind do not want to be left out. I exactly, promise you. Exactly. <laughs> so that is why it's important. There is nothing in here who is an enemy. Neither mind, neither ego, neither anger, neither anything of what can be. That is all just part of a whole and needs to be embraced in love, given its space. If not, it's going to rebel or it's going to feel left out or however. If we want to have harmony within this one, I have to just embrace all aspects of myself. Yeah. And if I should happen to be angry, well, I'm angry. Yeah. Voila. Yeah. And then if I voila, need to forgive myself for that, I don't even think we need to forgive ourselves for that because it's just the flow of life. We should just stop being in conflict with what is. But that's what the mind is doing. It wants to enter into all kinds of conflicts about reality, about how things are, how they manifest out of the illusion of that there is good and bad, right and wrong, and that we also have the ability to control things. Or, 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 and I'm not so sure that we have all that. We can do great things, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and also... If we, if we brought to our center and we are guided, it's not like we're going to sit down on the sofa and, do and we nothing. do nothing. No. We're going to be more busy than ever. And this is just flowing. And it brings from one to another to another. to And there is like, I, it's like throwing a stone in the water and you have all these rings. Mm. Do you think uh, we are in like a shift now nowadays? Because there's a lot of, 
going on in the world. And, and well, some people say, yeah, that's a good thing because that's like, well, uh, uh, well a change, uh, a dimension change. I don't know how you, how you call it. But do you think we are in a, living in a, in a good time now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And why? Because there is, uh, uh, there is individual growth and opening. There is a rise of frequencies, maybe in energy. Uh, at the same time, I do not feel, or what I receive is that it's not about a collective story. It's really, really uh, this is the dimension of duality. So here there mm -hmm. is many truths who are going parallel. Mm -hmm. So there is a beautiful awakening going on. I call that the rising of the heart tribes. I see there is more and more people who are connecting with true values, who are connecting with their hearts, mm -hmm. and, and who are working towards a different way of living. At the same time, I'm not closing my eyes to the rest of the world. I mm. see what's going on. I'm not one of those who cannot look at a, a newspaper or a, no. no. Uh, and, and so there is a duality. Maybe on the individual, there is an opportunity for really opening up and reconnecting. And, and, and on the other side, maybe world is heading for worse. And those two things can go together and be perfect. It's like I'm not in conflict with the will of great creator, if we want to call it that, mm -hmm. or universe or yeah. source or whatever, whatever. I think that everything that manifests, like if I speak in terms of God, if there is a God, yeah. then everything that manifests is the will of God. It's not just the good stuff which we identify with and we like, it's also the other stuff. And then maybe there is a, uh, God has a will, a plan. However, this is metaphor. I'm not really yeah. identifying myself no. into those terms, okay. but it's a good way of understanding. So then maybe there is a plan that goes beyond my understanding, but I can accept that it's still right. So then, yes, there is an awakening going on in these times, at least it seems like. Maybe because we're in the middle of it and we are surrounded by that. I so see. it really gives us the illusion that, that this even could be collective. But on the other side, no, for me, it is absolutely not collective, not at all. But what is happening together now is that certain souls who are here are being brought together. They are here to share something with this place, manifest, uh -huh. whatever. Uh -huh. I don't know. For what purpose, I don't care. It's about each and one coming home and manifesting and sharing what you are here for. And if that brings us together, let this grow. But not about we need to have a result. No, 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 exactly. Let's just do it for doing it because yeah. we, by experience, it finds resonance and we experience that. We can see that. We can feel that. And then let's just keep doing what we're doing. Okay, a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the God thing. What, what do you believe? I don't think God is a kind of person on a cloud somewhere, no. Uh, I like better the word source, for example, that yeah. there is the, the, this all comes from somewhere. Uh, I think we are connected to source. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. There's a lot you can say about that. In, yeah, it comes up in me now is then should talk about free will, uh, if there yeah. is one and so on, so on. There is a lot of All questions. Non -dualism, and, uh, dualism thing. Yeah, at, at the end, I've, I've, for me, it's like, there is, there is more than one truth. That's the best thing. And that's the easiest way to embrace a total. We are in the dimension of duality. So everything here has two sides and we have broken it into, well, but, but those two sides together makes one thing anyway. Uh, and maybe we are in this dimension of duality because uh, we learn and experience true duality. Yeah. To evolve into being drawn to the true values of oneness. Yeah, yeah. So like that's the whole balance thing we we experience left right left right left right. So that one day we will center. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And that maybe is is kind of last journey in this dimension. It's like, but then then there isn't any movement. It's like like. No, that's what I'm saying. No, there is, it's full of movement. Yeah. You'd be more busy than ever. And I know that you are a busy man already. Yeah. Well, uh, so <laughs> you'd be more busy than ever. For sure. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not feeling, I'm, but it's more like, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's really. And there is, there is, story, there is movement and there is experience. 
And it, but it's just out of this context of duality. Yeah. It's more experienced in this oneness. I, yeah, but in this oneness, there's like everything so good and bad. So I hope the water will flow. No, everything is still good and bad. Yeah, exactly. In this oneness. Yeah. But you're just at peace with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Then, and I think I know what you meant by that, but I, uh, I, I want to ask it again. <laughs> because uh, I, I really do think you are right in saying by what people have to do is go inside and, well, make it their, well, at first their individual, um, yeah, their individual thing to, to listen to their heart. But then you say, well, this isn't about a collective story, but isn't it like, yeah, it is a collective. We, the nature, everything. Yes. So yes. it's always a collective story. And then individual story, yes. Yeah, Answer yeah. is yes. Yeah, yes and yes. Both sides. Yeah, of course. Sure. How we separate that? We cannot separate that. No. We are part of a whole. But we are also making an individual journey and an individual evolution in that whole. Yeah. So I think that uh, we are part of a whole, but we are not the whole. No. We are part of source or part of God, but we are not God or no. source. No. So, yes. But together are, we yes. are. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that does not including us, it includes all there is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have, because now I know uh, a bit more about you, do you, how do you live? Do you have like a morning ritual? Um, if there is a morning ritual, it's expressing gratitude. Yeah. So it's you wake up? Not, not as a ritual. I will no. go and make my coffee and we I sit if I'm lucky and there is sun and maybe yeah. I just feel through the things about being, which I'm happy for in this life. Yeah, and that's a good way to start the day because you, you this 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 feels good. It fills yeah. your body with a nice energy. It's a nice departure, instead of taking out the agenda and looking at all the yeah, points exactly. and what <laughs> no, you have exactly. to do in the day. But for example, that that uh, well, one minute exercise or a meditation or or just exercise or take a cold shower. I don't know. I I've heard a lot about. I agree with I agree with all of them. You touch upon some of these techniques. I know. I think that they are all uh, useful tools yeah, and that they should be applied for a certain part of the journey and, and tools change. So it does not need to be that we are carrying using the same tool all our life so that we kind of are evolving in that. And, and then we all have different departure. The cold, cold shower start, my, that's great. And some find really what they're seeking for in that one. Uh, others, they can spend their day in morning in gratitude. Other can make their prayers. For me, it doesn't really matter. The idea is to find what works for you. Yeah. And there is maybe not a general thing, which is good. There is a multitude of different yeah. ways of doing it, but who brings it to the same source? And you of. say just explore it try it find your thing yeah but then and that i think that's a good thing you've mentioned then you use the tools for yeah maybe a few years or months or whatever but the the tools will change you say yeah there might be new tools coming yeah. and one is drawn to doing other stuff mm -hmm. again if one is not thinking about this then there is a flow of energy who moves us through life so then this will, in certain period, we are drawn to this, we apply because it brings us something. And then maybe it comes more flat. Yeah. And, and we, are, we have to use our, uh, um, our will to keep doing it. That's kind of forcing it. I don't believe in that one. If things have no. served its purpose, it will slide out because we're not really feeling like it anymore. And by this sliding out, that gives room for something else to slide in or something else comes in and pushes something out. That can be too. Uh, and if we are in the flow, nothing is fixed. No. So it's changing all the time. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. One thinks that all oh, you send to yourself is going to get boring. Uh, you connect yourself with this all understanding when there is empty, there is nothing left. No, actually, th this is just a shift. I think that the journey is 
we are like an onion and you peel layer by layer by layer so you can get to your essence and then it does what does it stop when we get to our essence or there is something happens so me i think we peel we peel we peel and if we can arrive at the essence then yeah. what happens is we expand yeah 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 okay and this never stops so that's why there is no end for me to this journey no, no. the the starting point wherever we are the starting point is to come home to myself. That's peeling my onion, not the word onion or whatever onion. It's about coming back to, to into my essence. And then once I'm there, that means I am, I've now overcome challenges of the mind. Let's say there is challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I take care of my body. This is part of the story also, absolutely not to be left out of it. And, and, and maybe I am more here than I am in my mind. Maybe then we are in a certain kind of flow mm. dynamic in life who is just bringing new things. Do you think we are um, a mind in a body or a body in mind? I think we are spirit incarnated into material who has a mind. Mm. Yeah. Why? Because if I look at this, then body, mind, spirit, so then if we are to put them into some kind of order or priority mm. or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, my body, I can kind of trace it. It came here at a certain point. I will die and it will go to nothing. My mind, yes, however brilliant, does not matter. It comes, it goes. But soul, if we believe, that's just an issue. If we believe or not, that's the only thing is eternal. Yeah. So if I was, so then for me, this is not about my mind. It is not about my body outmost. Mind and body is the vehicle to provide experience for soul. That's, a, that's why I think we are here, is for soul to have experience. And through having experience, soul evolves. So that's really the essence of what life is to... Why? I don't know. No, of course not. But... But it seems for me that that is what is going on. Yeah. And then, okay, let's say that uh, we are part of a multidimensional reality and that, that this is not the only place our soul makes a journey. And then what has come like over the last few years is that so we're speaking about this oneness. Mm -hmm. and, and I really can touch this belonging for that, you know, and for humanity to be in like, we know that what state. we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. That, in that state. And then I, I had hard just seeing it manifesting here amongst us. So I, then I was asking for guidance about that one. And what I received is that it won't happen here because this is the dimension of duality. And, and, and then you want to try to change it into the dimension of oneness. But you don't need to because the dimension of oneness exists already. And that's where you're going next. So I believe that this, what is going on, all these people individually who are touching upon these values, opening their hearts, reconnecting, however way, all these different paths, there is a reason for that. And they're sharing this feeling about oneness and-, and mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the reason? That, but they may be ready to check out and go into a next dimension after yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And because if we came in there with our mind and the way of seeing and reading and navigating, if I enter into the dimension of oneness tomorrow, I'd be totally out of place. <laughs> and what I would bring there would not be in harmony with what goes on there. So maybe I just need to finish with this earthly stuff first, and then I will be ready for what comes after. Yeah. And then me, I'm concerned now only speaking about two dimensions and then multi-dimensional yeah, exactly. means... Exactly, no, 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 of course. Uh, but and that's, <laughs> yeah. That's the, 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 the mind can't... No. Uh, no, okay. So, you traveled a lot, you, you, you learned a lot of things, you're, uh, yeah, like a really wise man. Um, what kind of tools you use? Uh, what, what kind of ceremonies or... or special breeding techniques or i have no idea this so this is really like an open question but what uh, can you take us back to some specific moments in your life when that well that feeling of of, of unity or uh, oneness or how you call it was 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 really there but i would i would answer that like over time i've been given different tools like 
I have I have had no teacher. Uh, books we can touch upon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, there is a voice who speaks in my head sometimes. Uh, yeah, I ask this because when we talked about this whole unity, uh, all is one feeling. I, I, well, uh, I, I, I did ayahuasca one time, mm -hmm. and was somewhere down there, there was also always this feeling that there is a connection with, with everything. And then at that specific moment, I, yeah, I really felt it and was like, okay. And to be honest, in general life, well, I don't know what you can do with it, but like you said, we are living in another world. Mm -hmm. But that's why I asked it. I thought maybe you've tried th those things and went to uh, specific places or I've had uh, I've had experiences without them becoming part of my toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to places, strong places, uh, like some what what kind of places? Pyramids. I've been spending time inside the chaos pyramid, for example, yeah. and and uh, other. Yeah. It might be just nature temples, or but yeah, there is some places on this planet who are yeah yeah. Power to place. just be yeah. there yeah, and yeah. to experience and to let these energies work through. Uh, I will take out one tool which I always carry with me, which is the runes. Yeah. Uh, and the runes I use in the sense for of of my uh, self development or for the runes know each and one of us better than we know ourselves. And but what is it, to, to be honest? I runes? know you are a rune master. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the runes. Um, the runes are uh, 24 symbols. Yeah. Uh, the last people who kind of used that was the Vikings. They used them to, to guide their tribes and for decision making and so on and so on. But the runes are a great tool to just get to know oneself. Uh, but they are like puppets or... No, they are small carved on a... a you, you've got it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring on the runes. I thought it, it thought that it, it, it has something to do with 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 stones or uh, things like that. No, like, I've worked with stones. I've yeah. worked with crystals. Uh, I use my drum for healing. Sometimes rattles. Uh, I have the runes. Uh, like I said, I have many tools yeah. which has been coming my way through spirit guide, whatever. Uh, that's why I said I've had no teachers. I no. only navigate according to what I receive. And how do you feel it? Do you think it's like? A special gift you have no that's the beauty of it it's like we we all have it's it. available have it's available it. for everybody that's the beauty of yeah. it that's that's why i'm sharing yeah if not i wouldn't if i thought this is just because i'm lucky then what is there to share no okay. no, no well then you uh, well some people believe it in in that way and then they are ready to help the world which is also a good thing sure but that's not that's my mission not, no. if i can if i can help some people like to find their way home yeah back to themselves uh that's that's kind yeah. of my journey and again home is, is where the heart, heart is yeah, yeah okay okay for me it's like that yeah and then so uh okay i do gatherings yeah and i invite for ceremonies so i don't know what i'm gonna do until we are there and the people are there these energies are there yeah then this can take form I operate and navigate in this 100% intuitively. Yeah, I yeah. try not to carry any Go mind with, with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if something really works today, tonight I go through a process of forgetting it. So that I will not draw upon these memories in future. That's the only way to allow the unseen manifest yeah. through yeah. what we co-create as an energetic field. And then I find myself in this through various different, that can be through the songs, it can be through the drum, it can be through conversations, room readings, it makes no difference. I'm there and I'm working energetically in that field which is co-created mm -hmm. by the group mm -hmm. and I fine tune energies. Okay, I'll go to the toilet. Good that. And maybe uh, we can do like a room reading. Yeah, why yeah? not? Okay. Yeah. yeah, cool, <laughs> that's good. So. So. A rune reading. Yeah. 
Uh, dus hij heeft een uh, tasje, uh, een zakje met allemaal. Ja, yeah, those are like stones. Ja. Ja? Ja, ja. Dit is carbon, actually. But yeah, they were carved okay. in stones. They were carved in wood. They were carved in. Ja. Yeah. There is three ways to make it simple. One could have a question. Uh, should not be a yes or no question. So it's better to phrase it as an issue. But maybe that, that can make a longer story. Ja. Yeah. One is just to be curious about what the runes would like to share with you in this present moment, if they have a message for you or whatever. And the third one is that one can have an issue, like uh, something personal, where, and one don't feel to express. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. one can focus within oneself about this issue. And the runes, I translate whatever their story is, and the person finds the answer even if the question is never outspoken. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe the second one is the best for this uh, for this conversation. So I'm really curious what the runes would like to say to me. Yeah. But it's easy. I will put them just there. Yeah. You can start by take one. Okay. And you turn it around so we will see the other side of it. So this rune speaks about some time in life. I mean, it's it's the right thing to do is actually take one step back instead of always wanting to move forward. Mm. So uh, we all do that. We always want to move forward. Right? Yeah. But sometimes it's better to actually, instead of running after things, taking one step back and let life bring us. Yeah, let life bring us what we're supposed to have it's like i say that our mind has a tendency to sometimes create illusion mm. and we think we want something and it might not be what we really need and if we you apply the mind we will get it yeah but we will only get it to realize that it doesn't contain what we thought it would, would contain and then it's more healthy if we sometimes can actually take this one step back and allow it to come to us because mm. we will recognize it by resonance yeah yeah that's a great lesson but what i do sometimes think about these things it's like for example and i'm don't, and i'm not gonna do it because i don't want the ruins to ruin my life <laughs> but you mean what I, what i mean is for example people are with with cards and things like that so if i if i ask myself now a specific question for example about if I will be a father or something like that. Then I take my runes and I put them away. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so you're not doing that. No, kind of, no, because, okay, no, then, no. okay, that's good. I, to know. I am not, I am great. I'm dealing with here and now. Yeah. And each and one of us, where we are now. Mm. And where okay. we are now okay, okay. and what changes we are making in the here and now yeah. defines where we will be in future. And that, for me, let's say the only thing that exists is the present moment. And whatever we define and do in that present moment decides where we will be in the next. Yeah. So, so yeah, right. I am not going into that no. because that gives a fixed idea in your head. Exactly. That and you are going to navigate according to this yeah. fixed idea. Exactly. And I don't want you to have any idea. No. I want you to be free. Okay. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to take uh, a rune yourself? Yeah. Because Can I have back. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Because <laughs> maybe it's all gonna yeah. come. <laughs> so I take the runes for strength. Strength. Yeah. And then. S being strong, you can put that in outer world or inner world. So when this rune comes, it speaks about being strength in in believing in oneself, in lifting oneself up by the self, by trusting in, like I have chosen to live heart-based mm -hmm. and by what I'm receiving as, uh, sorry, <laughs> and, and, and what I'm receiving as guidance. So this rune is for me, in each and one of us, it would lift up this, be strong to believe in yourself. Be strong to walk the path you are walking. Be strong to, to, to embrace the, your own truth. Whatever it is, even if it's different than everybody else's, it's yours. Yeah. And then you have to embrace that so you can live with that, so it can be a part and, of and, your and home. And what, 
what kind of feeling does it give to you when you are getting this rune now? Uh, by it, what it gives now. I did some runes this morning. I was curious. Okay. But I was curious to come here and see you. Mm. Because um, as you don't know nothing about me, no. I'm not Dutch, so I don't know nothing about no. you either. No. Um, and so um, I just wanted to have their point of view about what this day would contain. So uh, the runes who came was the rune for journey. So that is our path, whatever, if we put the two of us into yeah. it. Uh, the ru other rune, second rune who came was uh, breakthrough and success. So that this is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was the blank rune, which is the rune of karma. So. Uh, and what does that mean? That we are in exactly the right moment, in exactly going through exactly what we're supposed to in here and now. Doesn't mean it's good or bad. No, no, no. Doesn't speak about outcome, but it speaks about this is supposed to be. And so then uh, that gives me then peace to go here. Yeah. Okay. And so then, was it possible? That there were like other runes yeah, and yeah, that yeah. you thought, okay, I'm not going to go there. Uh, no, I think my feelings would have told me already yeah. if I was not to see you. <laughs> no. I wouldn't have to go to the runes for that. No. But sure, there would be runes who could point out certain things to be aware of or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Not about you, no. just about me and about how I should navigate in this one. Now the rune comes of strength. For me, it's just, again, believing in what works through me. Yeah. It's like, I wanted to add before, the most beautiful tool I have is love. And, and allowing love to touch people. I don't know why I have that possibility, capability to open my heart and to allow this love who flows through me to touch others. And some people, when they are touched by this love, so it's not mine, so it's not me, I'm not like the guru in okay. this story, you know? I'm a tool, I'm a servant. And by allowing this to pass through, this touches people and transforms some people's life. Now, I'm not saying that this can transform everybody's life, but again, it's about resonance. Yeah. And, and with the ones who are ready to be touched by this, they will find their way and it works. That's my experience. It works. And it puts people just more into their own story of self-realization, of self-healing, of becoming whole for themselves. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel that's the starting point. And, and, and we, the, we are missing that because we are always running to, for something else. And, and this love helps people to touch the source within themselves. Yeah. And that makes a change. That makes a difference. It's not theory anymore. You felt it. Now you know it. And if then at the same time somebody is telling you that this can be yours. Yeah. Yeah, talking about theory, that's that's the, that's a good uh well, in Holland we say bridge uh, to uh, talking about the books. Yeah. Uh, be because before we're going <laughs> to talk about the books, I'm really curious. Uh, hey, that's the same question I always ask to my guest. What are the three books that helped in your own journey um, but talking with you right now I'm thinking yeah of course it's like maybe also a tool but it's not it's not feeling it's not really learning it maybe what do you mean really learning it well because when you uh, well I love to read books I oh, yeah. have we touch base on that one yeah thank you okay thank you Okay. Yes, we can fill our head. Now, and now I'll be funny, okay? So we can fill our head with a lot of stories, with a lot of theories, a lot of beautiful things, techniques, this, that, yeah. And then we can talk about them after. Yeah. Because we have those programs. Yeah. Question is, do we really know what they're talking about? Do we really know what they mean? And in my experience, they are theory. Yeah. And theory lived and experienced becomes knowledge. Yeah. So the same, same as a uh, driver's license, uh, you first uh, begin with the theory and then you're going to practice it. And yeah, and you get a permit to practice on your own after. Yeah, exactly. Then you, and then you will really learn it. And that's what I think this is. So it's like for me, it's about, okay, if you can touch people with this love, they recognize something, they resonance within them. You have to give them simple tools mm -hmm. so that they can approach this and advance on that for themselves. The idea is not they need to come back. But after there is 
maybe a call to come back. But at the end of this, this should be everybody find their own set of keys and they can navigate in this with their own guides, with their own connections, with, because we all have it. Yeah. But we're not looking for it. But if we do, uh, we will find. So for me, uh, yeah. And then books. Um, <laughs> I'm on this path 32 years, okay? And um, there is one book. There's one book. There's only one book. And I have not even read it back to back. Okay. Yeah. And this book is called The Book of Runes. The Book of Runes. Okay. We, okay. And it's, there is many, many books about runes. Now, this is only my personal opinion, so what are other people can have their own. Um, and there is only one of these books who are working. The, the runes, if they really work, then they should be door openers to our subconscious mind so that we can read messages which we know, but we are not aware of about ourselves, let's say. And then that's... So there is this guy, he's American, he is, uh, his name is Ralph Bloom, he has written this, The Book of Runes. And I would say for me, this is the only book that works. Why? Because it's not the, it's not the words which he is sharing, it's what they do inside us. So he is saying simply that I am not claiming to be historically right uh, about these interpretations. I'm not saying this is how they were used in the past, but I ch this got channeled through me in some nights and I'm sharing these stories. So there is a small story connected to each rune. And then you read this story, you have, a, uh, you have an issue, a mm -hmm. subject, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you read the story in relation to your issue. And that will make you think of something, it comes up in your head. So it's not the story is important, it's whatever comes up in you. And for some reason, these stories, which he has them put in this book, they really work. And over time, you can say that you can take the same rune a hundred times and you read the same story a hundred times and it gives you a hundred different answers. Okay. And then uh, I want to speak about another book. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're, Are we not we're, finished? No, we're, we're <laughs> definitely not finished. Okay. Because <laughs> now I really understand that, that, that the runes are, they, they have a big role in your life. They are like a guide for you. Which I can sometimes go to or not, but okay, so there is a journey with the runes. So uh, I grew up in Norway where you, one would think that I have them with me from there, but that is not true. I had to leave Norway and actually go to Australia, which is on the other side, and encounter the runes for the first time. I was visiting friends, they had runes, I was playing with them for a few weeks and I was blown away by how can they know me better than me? Yeah. Just that didn't make sense. But then my journey continues i traveled uh and they became a memory i did not really th think about the runes anymore beautiful experience and then at one point i'm arriving in thailand and it's nighttime and i'm arriving in this island and there is this woman taking me to my bungalow or it's dark uh, i go to sleep i wake up in the morning i lie down in the hammock and then i see that the whole wall of the bungalow is just painted full of runes ah. and i'm like wow and then this story comes back and i remember and I'd go down and I walk around my bungalow, all four walls full of runes. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, yeah, maybe they've done that everywhere. So I'm looking around. I know that was the only bungalow full of runes. But with that, this story came back full power. And then I'm thinking to myself that, that this is not coincidence. So when you get back to Norway, get yourself the first set of runes. Mm. And then I arrive back in Norway and I meet a friend of mine and he knows nothing about this. And he comes to me and he says, hey, I have a present for you. Oh. And I open the present and inside is the book from this Ralph okay. Bloom and my first set of runes. Mm. And then the journey with the runes is that in the beginnings, so I would use them for myself to better understand myself. Yeah. And uh, a self evolving process. Yeah. Um, and then at some point, these stories, actually the, the runes started to talk. They started to come with stories who were slightly different than in this book. And then the story started changing also. So for me, it went from like this book I couldn't use anymore. Now the runes were speaking directly through me, like if I was a translator. And then my experience was that when I now share the runes with others, the story changed according to who was listening because words are delicate. It has to be the right imagery. It has to be the right words 
chosen for each and one mm -hmm. individually if you're really yeah. going to get the message. Yeah, language is like a barrier. Exactly. All the time. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then I experienced that the runes were fine tuning themselves into each situation where a message was to be shared. Yeah. But. I, yeah, yeah, and then it goes further because yeah. then at some point later down the road, in rune readings, I was finding myself way ahead of the story. Like it would come out, I would talk, things would pass through, messages would be shared, and we would maybe come to hear with the runes, but the stories, they were like way ahead. Yeah. And then we would go back to the runes and we would draw runes again, and the runes would come out as a reconfirmation of the story we had already been told. So then I realized that actually, this has now become an energetic thing yeah. and we don't need the physical runes anymore because we're reading runes without the runes anyway. Okay, that's that, uh, oh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was thinking like, oh, he's making these runes like so big that are like another, well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, big, and, and it's like maybe you can use it as a mirror and like sure. you said, sure. uh, maybe you can listen to yourself by using the runes, but yeah. it's all in you, of course. Yeah. And for me, like where I am today is like, yeah, I took some runes this morning, but rarely I take runes for no, myself. Okay. And it's more for fun about, yeah, yeah, it's, it's about a, seeing if my yeah. feeling is, is resolved or supported yeah, by what yeah, comes out there. It's a great tool, yeah. But they have become a great tool in helping others to reconnect yeah. with, with issues within themselves, which they know and maybe have touched upon, but it just brings it to the surface so they yeah. can become more aware of it and start to deal with it no more hocus pocus about it no. actually no but, uh, and then i asked the runes at some point because i come to hungary and and the hungarians are very excited because in their alphabet which they are claiming is the first alphabet i don't know well i'm not judging right. that <laughs> there is runes in their alphabet and then when i saw that so then i put this into context and then i say okay let's open the possibility for that their alphabet is the first how can the runes be in there and for me, the message I was receiving then that that means that the runes were here before this first alphabet. If not, they wouldn't be in there. If the runes yeah, came after, no, they would never yeah. be added. So then I asked, so where are the runes actually coming from then? I asked, and the answer I was given was that the runes are, uh, they have been here from the beginning of time and they are forms of energy. And, and they, and then they are translated into some symbols or whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever. But if we can tap just the source of energy, that's what yeah, it's active, it's there, it can be navigated by, used for, however, yeah. Okay, but there isn't like another book, or not? Yeah, there is one more book, which is maybe the most important of okay. all book, and that's the book we all carry inside ourselves, uh, which nobody bothers to read. No, and it's, and it's unwritten, or... Yeah, and it's pinpointed, it's 100% for you. Yeah. But do you feel like we've talked about this a bit in the whole non-duality thing, but do you think it's like unwritten or is there already like a book or a guideline we all have and we just live by the book? Let's take duality and break that into two then. Okay. Okay. There is time and then there is no time. Both is true. Yeah. So if it was written, that indicates that there was time. So yes, it's written. But at the same time, it's written as it happens. Yeah. Because there is no time. And like, uh, add another one into that one, which yeah. I find funny. Yeah. So, so we all have like, we're talking about past lives. And then, yes, there is time. We have, we can measure this in Earth. Well, do we have fossils, you have whatever. We come, we go, well, there is something passing. Mm -hmm. This is for sure. But uh, I lost what I was going to say about that. No, no, no. But, yeah, well, I'm really curious about that. So there is time in uh, when you talk about well, human bodies. That that's what you said. Yeah, but at the same time, your past lives are yeah. happening at the same time as you're having this life. If there is no time, yeah, that's what I wanted to go with. Yeah. That. So you have a timeline, a linear time, yeah. and there we can say we have past life, and then you have a total who surrounds the linear oh, where there is no time. So that means everything happens in one moment. Yeah, all the different lives, all the and so then there becomes many truths. It's written and it's not written. There is a past the future it's crazy to or it is only the subject, present yeah. moment yeah okay let's talk about music okay because uh, that's yeah well I, 
I'm I'm curious how do you what 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 do you what do you think what music actually is because you use that also as like a tool with 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 the drums and and, and ceremonies things like that. So yeah, it's a it's a, it's a big question maybe. But what do you think music is? In its essence, it's yeah, vibration. And, and yeah, that's of course what it is. Which which uh, uh, interacts with our energetic field, who has the ability to harmonize or disharmonize, or or or, and then music is a great tool for in in all its aspects. People can find what resonance within them in certain, and and it can bring anything. It can yeah. bring happiness. It can bring joy. It can bring excitement. It can bring sadness. It can open the door for us to process and get out our our things. Which but music can be everything. And maybe uh, it's like when you and you call it this way. Maybe like music is like well nature as well. Yeah. 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 And it's all part of this whole total who are there who it plays a part yeah and if we consciously feel more drawn to for example music can be a tool for healing absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and and uh, it can be a, a great thing for getting out your aggression it just depends what music you're putting and what state you're yeah. allowing yourself to go into uh yes yeah, so the music is it's great yeah yeah how do you see your life? Do you have any um, ambitions or what, what? Because, yeah, you've just mentioned I just go with the flow, which is great. But, well, for me in this Western life, it feels a bit awkward as well. Or, or oh, yeah. Yeah. Ambition would be to uh, keep listening yeah. and keep navigating according to what I'm receiving. Being brave and allowing for growth. Yeah, that one. And do you still sometimes <laughs> have? Yeah, that's a, that's so big. It's great. But do you still sometimes have that unsatisfied feeling you had when you were like twenty five? No, never. No. But uh, what I do, I, what I do receive is that I, I I I do receive stuff really tingles and tickles me who I would like to experience. Mm -hmm. I won't then go all in to make it happen, but I will allow for what could make it happen. And if it would manifest, it's because it's supposed to manifest, and I would take great pleasure out of having those experiences. And otherwise, uh, it's just meant to be. That it's it, not uh, meant to be. So I'm at peace with that, but but that doesn't mean that I'm like uh, that. I'm no things are in movement. Things yeah. are really expanding and growing, yeah. and and that's why I came up with this one that I have to also be brave enough to to allow for growth. Uh, but yeah, it's expanding. It's 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 exciting. There yeah. is there is new opportunities. There is new people. But it all comes from this center of love of heart. And that's what opens these doors and connects to the, these different levels of reality and yeah. different kind of. And I don't. I'm curious. That's more than anything. Uh, I'm so curious about what is this going to bring. You know, yeah. if I'm looking, I'm, I'm not looking to see a fixed image about what in ten years. Yeah. But maybe I can, in my feeling, just open my heart and feel like where this is going. And so I'm excited. I'm curious. Uh, I'm totally open and happy for meeting new people, new connections. And and it's not about being same like me. That's not the issue. It's about from all wherever. Yeah. But there is this thing we have in common. It's like I said, the heart tribes, they can they can pop up in, in any civilization, culture, uh, religion, does not matter. It's about connecting from the heart and then bypass all this mental mm -hmm. stuff and let's meet where we are one which is in the love and the heart, and let's co-create from that. And then we will see. I'm so happy anyway, like even if it doesn't evolve anymore, and even if I can continue just sharing and, and navigating through life, how I, I'm fully content with this. But at the same time, I see that what life is not, it's not stopping. No. So then it's more bringing me up to, okay, you have to allow this to to just find its form. It's not about me standing in the way. It's not about me at all, actually. No, no, no. It's about this path, which I call the path of the heart, and it's about bringing people to the heart, and and so that they can also just find themselves again. 
And with whatever it brings, it doesn't matter. They will just be better off, each and one of us, by reconnecting to ourselves. And do you ever feel insecure? Mm, no. No, I look good at that one. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, Because I don't know what your status is, but uh, I don't know if you are in a relationship or, or, or how do you see that? But yeah. And and I think it's beautiful what you are saying, but listen to your heart can be an insecure thing as well because it's so vulnerable. I think that uh, if when there is just enough beaming through it, then it's it is not vulnerable. vulnerable no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I think it's maybe if we allow mind into that, yeah, mind carries fear, mind carries many things. We can like kind of bring that story with the heart. Mm-hmm. It can be emotional wounds who closes down heart. Can, there is many things. It's not just mind who is inf- influencing this one. Uh, so there is a whole healing process to go through to 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 do all that. But uh, no insecurity. Why not insecurity? Because I have just total confidence in that everything will be how it's supposed to yeah. be. And 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 what I. Uh Yeah, are you in a relationship right now? Yeah. And and how, um, because of this, sometimes I, I think it's hard to, to understand with the mind that you're connected with your heart, we're all connected with each other, but there's this, and I have this feeling right now, there's this extra special feeling, but yeah, it's all love. Everything is love. Yeah. So, and maybe... My mind cannot, uh, yeah. My God, I got a nice picture of that. And I could kind of see this as the, there is this fountain of universal love, mm-hmm. okay? And it's just constantly overflowing. Mm-hmm. And then love filters then into our dimension, which has different layers. And in our dimension, each layer of love has a different It's parental love, or it's love for your partner, love mm. for your friends, love yeah. for, they all experience slightly different, but they are from the same source. So then, yes, we have, I have, I have a son, I have great love for my son, there is love for, and then there is this mm. unconditional love, which it's is like for the all there yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. And that doesn't take away these other layers, the other layers are there, And then for sure, if you then speak about partner love, mm-hmm. then for example, so if you have a partner and you're sharing a certain fraction of this love, maybe your partner don't like if this fraction of love you are kind of sharing with everybody. While it is possible to have this fraction of love with a partner and still allow oneself to share from the heart universal love with everybody without needing to feel threatened no. about what we're... So insecurity would be about that. So then... Uh, that would be the right question rather to ask on the other side, like the partner, does the partner feel insecure in that story? Uh, for me, again, it's like, I, I no, uh, I have to follow my path. Yeah. And the ones who are surrounded and close to me, they know that. And And so if it is supposed to be, there is a space in all of that for me to follow my path with harmony with what is around me. And then if not, things have maybe served a purpose and they will be shed. But that is life. And then uh, my guides told me in the beginning of this because there was people telling me that I could not, if I wanted to have a spiritual path, I could not have a partner, I could not have family and all of that. And then my guides were telling me that actually in this life you can allow yourself to have everything. So I'm not in in that one. No. No, No, that's uh, what I said. Okay, uh, before I go to the same question as always, which is the last question, uh, <laughs> uh, because this was like, well, like I said in the beginning, for me a really uh, new thing, because no or almost uh, non preparation at all. Is there like a specific thing you would like to talk about that you're thinking, hey, we haven't talked about this, and for me it's, yeah. 
what do you think is important to I think we've touched upon a lot of things which are important for me um which is actually bringing everything home and and then go from there yeah and then kind of like reconnect with the whole again but from one center instead of like being scattered yeah being in the whole but actually not with oneself uh yeah i don't know what what issues uh, like i spoke about I, i can mention that and since you in invite so <laughs> i would say that having this experience of of when this love is really circulating amongst a group of people this is just a beautiful experience for everybody who is involved um so yes i would rather speak about one wish i have on my own personal behalf it would be just so beautiful one day yeah if you if i could have the pleasure of experiencing a ceremony with a lot of people like we joked about that and what came up is like if put 50,000 people in a football stadium you put a huge crystal grid in the middle and you put them through this ceremony of three hours just channeling love into this one and just to make this turn i would love to have that experience because i know that when this touches this just penetrates and touches and there is nobody who is really immune for that and this is something i would like to if there is growth if there is possibilities mm. if there and i would love that there is just everybody you feel there is many uh, who are connected to their heart yeah. sharing this wisdom and connection in their own ways it would be beautiful if we meet if we get together if we can put things together who can just like yeah it for me it's like seeing it as an amplifier being brought in yeah, it's like yeah, each yeah, and exactly. one of us we're doing our stories but it's like this could be just so much more powerful that's the, that's the well then that's the collective story yeah yeah because i do really okay there is individual and collective but they go together they know, so yeah. for sure bringing yeah. things into the collective yeah. that is great Okay, when will when will uh, sometimes or someday there will be like a kukuru meeting, and I will definitely invite you. Fifty thousand <laughs> people in the stadium. I don't know if that's great. Uh, Let's do that. We can start with five hundred. Oh, okay, stepping stone. Huh? It's not a problem. That. And normally I can and can say to people go to the website, go to uh, read the book, or go to the whatever kind of. Uh, but well, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's um, for me. No, no. It sorry, but it is in it is in process at the moment. Okay. To find me is easy. Is just go on Facebook and and that's stupid and maybe a bit. Uh, but it works. I'm <laughs> there. Um, and then there is now people working on website. Okay. There is people putting together that. Okay. I'm I'm in my thing. No, okay. <laughs> and I'm not really good at these no. other things. Okay. And then yes. other people now are pro yeah providing some help. So things are coming together. Great uh yeah okay what do you think and we talked about this but like i said i'm going to the end in the same way as always uh what do you think of death conclusion of um are you afraid are you looking forward none of that none of that i will embrace that with with my heart open and uh when that day comes i'm not in a hurry i'm not trying to avoid it's a beautiful conclusion of this passage and i do not think that anybody can die i think we just transform yeah you you, you talked about this the 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 eternal thing like yeah. body is gone yeah, yeah. mind is gone yeah but the soul continues yeah and 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 um how to put that we celebrate like so we have a child and this child becomes a certain age and there is a we celebrate yeah. they have done a passage and then uh, voila life is like that we come from somewhere and we end it somewhere so in those old cultures who are still celebrating death i really think they got it you know because they're not saying they're not it's not about not being sad it's not about not missing or, or no but it's actually celebrating a conclusion of a passage a journey and this i think is beautiful so the day when i will die i know that this journey this part of it has fulfilled its purpose yeah. and is finished rest for the next phase and i'm just going to be curious to see where does it go next yeah okay but uh yeah uh, ragnar johnson sitting here 
with this body will be gone. <laughs> uh, One day, yes, yeah. sure, hopefully. Uh, and and uh, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, I, I don't have that want. I don't care. No, okay. Okay, let's ask it another but way. If I, how, do you, how do you think they will remember you? Because but I, I think that if I can do I read what's around me right now. So I'm kind, yeah. of, I'm kind of leaving a footprint, walking this path of the heart and sharing from my heart. And, and that's become my life. So if I die tomorrow or if I don't fuck it up in the next 30 years, I have left my footprint. That's what people will remember. That's what people will talk. Uh, and if it, I, I know already, it, it helps people to, to reconnect with themselves. It might not change the world and it might, it might not work for everybody. I don't, that does not really matter. But I know that it makes a difference, that I'm walking in these shoes, doing what I'm doing. For some, it has an impact and it makes a difference. And for me, that is a good feeling connected with that and then the highest wish i have is that if everybody could just be allowed to experience this inner reality which i have tapped within myself i couldn't give anybody a more beautiful gift thank you so much for sharing this Ragnar. thanks for being here hey, it's a pleasure thank you for thank you. inviting yeah. me. yeah from from my heart to your heart yeah uh, yeah heart medicine exactly <laughs> cool uh, bedankt voor het luisteren. Ik hoop uh, dat je het. Uh, ja, ik vond het een bijzonder gesprek. Wat ik al zei, anders dan anders. Um, nou ja, laat me weten of je vaker van dit soort. Uh, nou ja, toch hele andere gesprekken wil. Waarbij er. Uh, nou ja, niet specifiek over een bepaald onderwerp wordt gesproken. Dan wel waar Koekeroe over gaat. En nou ja, laat ik het dat nu maar even het hart noemen. Uh, hartjes kan je ook omhoog doen. Uh, bijvoorbeeld uh, bij het YouTube-kanaal. Vergeet er niet te abonneren, reacties achterlaten. Al die ongein. En, oh ja, ik weet nu inmiddels hoe het werkt. Uh, zowel bij Spotify als iTunes kan je recensies achterlaten. Dan moet je op je puntjes drukken. En dan zeg je gewoon leuk. Of uh, doe een heel verhaal of ik wat. Uh, maar dan kunnen we het nog meer uh, sharen dit. Link is in de beschrijving. Afijn, ik ben helemaal uitgeluld. En uh, ik ben wel blij dat ik weer even Nederlands kan praten, moet ik eerlijk zeggen. Uh, dit was uh, Koekeroe. Tot de volgende. Zonnegroet. Hoi.